this is story time right now. We're going to have a story time right now. And I want to tell y'all how I'm dealing with it too. And I'm going to tell you the bad side and the good side. A lot of times the bad outweigh the good. And sometimes the good outweigh the bad. But it's always a reason for everything. And being isolated and separated from your whole entire family. A lot of people don't even know what that feels like to be separated from your whole entire family. But for some reason, excuse me, God got me in isolation right now. I'm in isolation right now. I'm even blocked off from my family right now. And I know I was supposed to block them because of the energy they kept giving me and the feeling that I had in my heart. And God was like, you need to block them right now. Because the things that I have planned for you in your life, you can't continue to communicate with them. Or it's going to cut you off. It's going to cut you short because your, your emotions is going to take over. And you need to just cut them, cut them off. Cut them off and focus on me. Focus on me. You know what I'm saying? And it's the hardest thing to do because, remind y'all, I got a 21-year-old and I got a 23-year-old. Right, she just turned 23. And I got six grandkids, right? Six grandkids. And so, when God said cut them off, I'm like, I don't want to cut them off. I don't want to cut them off. And so I waited. I didn't listen. It was a week that went by, and I'm on Facebook, and I'm, like, I shared my daughter's um, post on Facebook. And um, she didn't even... She usually say, thank you, mom, for sharing my post. She didn't even say that. She just ignored the fact that I shared it. She ignored saying thank you. And people, other people commented under her post. And she liked their comment. I commented, too. She ignored my comment. And so I'm like, at this point, I know I need to block. I know I need to not answer no phone calls and just cut them off for me. Because when a person get too much, I mean, have too much access to you, they don't even understand how important it is to have you in their life. Period. And you know you always there to be a listening ear. You're not there to tell them anything negative. You always giving them um, positive words of encouragement. And so I'm like, I can't. I gotta block them. I gotta listen. I have to be obedient. I did not want to be obedient. I did not want to be obedient because me cutting them off. I, I, I miss my grandkids. Like having grandkids is a different type of love. It's a different type of love. It's the type of love that. I can't even explain it. I just over love them. Like I just want to hug them and kiss them and just spend all the time in the world with them. And now I'm cut off from them and it's, it affects me. I have to look at pictures. I have to listen to videos. I just, you know, and then I, and I cry and I just be feeling, you know, some type of way. I do. I really do. But I know when you don't listen to God, when you don't listen to God, like I know that he had me here for a reason. I know he had me here for a reason. I just know he do. And I feel it in my heart. I feel it. I feel it right here. And so, I had to block my mom too. I blocked my mom because her support, she never really supported me. And I didn't, you know how some mothers could be jealous of their daughters. I hate to, I hate to even title it that. You know, but I'm also not going to ignore it and stuff it down and act like it's not a thing. Because right now, today, it is a thing. Parents do be jealous of their daughters or daughters do be jealous of their moms. And, you know, and it's, it's crazy. Because if you know that this person is in your life and you know that you have access to this person, you know if this person wins, you're going to win. It's obvious. But don't be upset for the goals that this person have or the things that this per person is able to create and the things that this person is able to do when you know that this person is your mom or your daughter or your aunt or your cousins. I don't, at this point, I don't talk to nobody in my family. Not one person. And so my mom called me last week Sunday and I, it's like 7 o'clock in the morning and she like, you going to church? You going to church? Now my mom, no. I don't go to church because church is just full of hypocrites and all the other things. You know what I'm saying? And I like to feel myself forward and, and, and really truly follow God because God talk to you when you have that solitude you come out stronger spiritually because you don't have all these extra voices saying things and repeating things it's just like one solid listen you hear it and it's a clear conversation that God have with you when you have that time and that solitude you know with him and so because my 
perception of how I wanted to connect with God didn't meet my mother's standard because her standard is going to church every Sunday, um, then sitting on the phone gossiping and talking about people and all the things that just didn't look right to, to me or didn't feel right to my heart. So I had to disconnect the relationship with my mom and in my solitude and being all the way in Washington, right? I have learned that when you listen to God and you are obedient, you can hear God clearer. You can hear him clearer when you're when you're on course and you're on a specific pathway and you know that God speaks to you. You know, my mom like, God don't speak to you. You don't even believe in him. And I'm just like, for her to blurt that out and say all this other negative derogatory things to her daughter, it just leads me to feel like she could be jealous of me or envious or something. And I hate to say that, but I'm not going to act like it's not important or there's not a thing. Like I said a few minutes ago. You know, so I had blocked her. I blocked her after she made that phone call, asked me was I going to church. I blocked her off, and me blocking her off, it's like I opened up of energy. Like I feel freer. I don't have to conform to nobody because somebody think I should be this way, and somebody think I should do this, and somebody think I should do that. You know, I could just be my own way that God created me to be. You know, and. With me doing that, she went and talked to my daughter about me blocking her. And my daughter called me on her behalf. Like, why are you even calling me? You already know. But it's times when I was standing with her, she, she looked like she was a demon. And she was talking and foaming at the mouth. It was like something was spiking up inside of her that I'd never, ever seen in my life in her. And I know it's because of my presence. And I'd and I be trying to ignore the truth. But when you have a light in you. I don't know, but so every time I get ready to say something powerful, the phone just do this thing. I don't know what it's doing, but if you, when you have a light in you and you have a purpose to attend to and you know it's God-ordained, the enemy will rise up against you and it'll come at you through people, through people you know that's supposed to love you. You know, and I still love my family and I love my, my kids and I love... I love everybody. I love so strong. I love her, but I also love God. And I love the fact that he gave me the sight to see the things that I need to see. He gave me the ability to move forward and to move blockages out of my way. Because I know that when you know you are, when you, I know that I'm what I'm created for, what I'm born for. But at the same time, you have to protect your energy and protect your space. Because when you have a light in you, the darkness don't like when you beam it. And we try to create things and create environmental situations to make you see life in a certain way to make you feel like you just don't have nobody and nothing in your corner. And honestly, actually, God is in my corner right now. You know, and I do have this significant other, but our stuff is rocky too right now. You know, and I don't even post him because of what we've been through in our past. I don't post him or anything. I even deleted the video that I had up here uh, that I posted uh, a week ago or two weeks ago of me and him. Because I, I just feel like when God says it's time to put him all over my social medias, if it ever comes to that, that is what I'm going to do. That is what I'm going to do because right now I'm in the process of, of listening more to him and staying the journey of in, in learning how to truly discern his voice as opposed to my ego mind. Because our ego start telling us things too. You're not enough and you're unable to do this and you know you can't do that. And, and all the other negative things. You don't have no family. All you got is you. The whole time God is like right there like, you better not listen to that negativity. Because you know you got me. I'm always here for you. When you crying, I'm here and I hear you cry. When you praying, I hear you praying. When you meditating, I see you signs. I see you signs. I see you numbers. Because numbers is important, y'all. Do not ignore the signs of numbers. It's 2-2-2 two, two, two on the clock right now when I said that. Do not ignore the signs of numbers. And 2-2-2, two, 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 I believe, means protection. But s signs come through numbers. It comes through babies talking to us. Because my, my kids do it to me all the time. It comes across uh, TV. I don't watch too much TV, but I know that it had happened to me before. Where I'll be watching a, a movie and I hear... A, a saying in a movie and it really relates to my whole entire life you know and billboards on, on expressways I'm telling y'all do not ignore the signs and if God is talking to you how to hear his voice clearer is to really get quiet and block out all the noise around you block out all the noise around you 
could, because I'm telling you, his voice get louder when it is quiet. When we plugged into the phone, plugged into all the social medias, looking at videos, scrolling and scrolling. We ain't look at the, our favorite movie, yet, my favorite show. I don't want to miss no episode. I'm telling you right now, that is a distraction. Keeping you from hearing God's voice louder. And that's just real simple and plain. And I know when God has something for you, he have you in the wilderness. When it's something you're supposed to do, you're in the wilderness. And I'm telling you, if you are watching me right now, and you are in the wilderness of something, you are in the middle of a divorce, you are arguing every day with your significant other, and you don't know why, be quiet. I'm telling you, the purpose of God tearing things down and breaking things down is, is the destruction that has to happen. It has to happen. It has to be a tower moment because it's something that he has for you. And he wants you to be obedient. And I'm telling you, my situation is so crucial. Like, I have a significant other, but we don't have sex. Like, we don't have, we don't do those things. Like, right now, my relationship with God is, is primary when I tell you. Energy is everything. Energy is everything. Even when, when you get to that, that moment with your significant other. That is supposed to be a spiritual experience. It's supposed to be a, a spiritual experience. And I know it's supposed to be a spiritual experience. But when, if I do it with you and I, we there and we did that, the energy I get from it is a negative feeling in my vibration. I could feel things so intensely. I know when something is just not right. This is why I started my spiritual coaching right now, right here on this channel. You know, and to, for me to start this Right now, at this phase, it's because God told me to do it. God told me that I can't just ignore this any longer. It just can't be ignored any longer. And I feel compelled to say, slow and steady wins the race. And I also feel compelled to say, be obedient. Be obedient. Listen to yourself. If you feel like crying, cry, right? Crying is liquid, healing. It's liquid, but it's a healing that takes place when you release that type of liquid. You know, crying, praying, talking out loud to God, you know, and not begging him to do this and begging him to do that, but talking to him as if it already happened. Thank you for blessing me with that house, Lord. I really appreciate it. Thank you, universe. Thank you for blessing with the house. And I also want to thank you for putting my spiritual family in my life. And thank you for connecting me to the people that's going to support me. The people that are supposed to be there. Because God will rip. He will rip. He will tear everything away from you. Because he knows that there is something that you are supposed to do. And in order for you to see the thing that you are supposed to do. You can't have everything holding on to your ankles and holding on to your life and holding on to you in any type of way. Or you won't never be able to see the clear message or the clear lesson that you are supposed to have. Because I'm telling you right now, your life is not for you to be just doing all the things and anything. Your life is for a purpose. It's for a reason, a specific reason, a specific person. Can be purpose. And if you really want to know what your destiny is in your life and your purpose is in your life, all you have to do is write it is, is to write it down. What is my purpose right before you go to sleep at night? And you ask God to reveal to you what your purpose is. And it's going to come, even if it don't come that night while you're sleeping and you remember it in the morning like that. Allow God the process to carry you through that process, that journey, to bring you to that answer. Because let me tell you, what you're looking for is always looking for you. What you're in search of is always in search of you. So if you're in search of the greatest version of yourself, know that that is about to be met. Because what you're looking for is looking for you. Period. Period. So I'm going to leave y'all with what I do and how I do to get through my day. I get up in the morning, I write, I write, however I feel a lot of the times, but a lot of times I write affirmations, 
and I know I need to write more affirmations. I'm getting, I'm positioning myself right now. Excuse me. But I have extreme high intuition and strong intuition and I'm sensitive in, in the area of helping people. Like when somebody inboxed me on Facebook the other day and said, I feel like killing myself. I feel like killing myself. I don't want to live no more. And the first thing that came to my mind was to tell her that you are here for a purpose and you are here for a reason. And so to take something that God created to feel like you want to take it away is a blessing that he got for you. It's a blessing that he got for you. Whoever watching me right now and you need to hear this, your blessing is near. But to give up, on you is to give up on him and what he put you here for at this moment, this very moment. And so my thing to her was to, I'll walk with her through this experience and I'll talk with her through this experience, but I really want her to want me to do it. If she don't want me to do it, I won't waste my time because I don't want to waste hers. And so we begin to talk. And we begin to go through the process of how her day is and why she feels like she want to kill her. She lost somebody. Her brother passed away. And she missed him so much. And I'm telling her that when somebody passed away, it doesn't mean they're completely gone. Their physical body may be gone, but their spiritual body never dies because our spirit is energy. Energy never dies. Energy never, ever dies. So I told her, all you got to do is write him a letter. Speak out to him. He can hear you. And it's normal. It's okay. And so this is the part of our, our culture and our connectedness to spirit that's almost void. It's like it don't even exist. Because we're not taught to speak out to the people that passed away. But when you go to Africa and you learn their way, which is an extension of who we are too, we are, we are all connected. You, you lose connection when you lose um, intelligence, when you lose wisdom. The connection is start dwindling because you're no longer knowing or connecting to exactly what it is that you really need to be doing right now. And over time, because way back then they was doing it, but over time, you know, our history was re being rewritten. So we can forget certain things and certain things are being pulled out of our whole way of life. And so for me to be here right now telling you that it's okay for you to speak to people who passed away. Speak out to them. They're always around. They always around. You're always protected. You're always. I am always protected. I am always protected. I am always protected. You have spirits that be around you, which is angels, right? You have angels around you, and our, we have spirit guides. Our, our guides that come into this earthly plane to help us and assist us through this life. All we have to do is speak to them. When you speak to them, you're acknowledging them, so you're giving them power in your physical realm. And this is so. It's all in the movies around us, like in uh, Coco. You know, but when they pass and in the movie, I love this movie so much. But if you have never seen Coco, go watch the movie because it's going to tell you that, you know, spiritual people, I mean, people that's passed over to the other world, you know, they're forgotten about um, over here. They start fading away over there. I mean, they just go into nothingness. They still be um, spirits, but they just don't be in that reality, in that dimension. They fade away, but that's not how I look at it. But I know that. To repeat somebody's name and to remember them is a powerful thing. And so to speak out to them as if they're around, they'll send you signs too. This one lady said her grandmother told her, but my, my grandmother was on her deathbed and I was talking to her and I was like, um, grandma, just let make sure you leave something when you pass away to let me know you're around me. I want to know if you, when, you are, when, you, when you're around me. She started finding pennies everywhere. Y'all probably heard the story too. She started finding pennies everywhere because her grandmother told her, if I'm going to leave some change, I'm going to leave quarters, nickels, pennies, and dimes. You know I'm there. You know you, you know that was me. She said she started. She said she got in the bed one night and the whole bed was full of dimes, nickels, and pennies. She said she almost died in that moment because she knew it was her grandmother. Like, that really is real. All you have to do is acknowledge them in our, in our living life. Right? Acknowledge them now. And then guess what? You will see signs. Like, no need to be scared because fear is connected to something else. And what you focus on grows. Energy, wherever you put energy, it grows. Energy grows where energy goes. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? So I'm going to cut it short right here. Tomorrow, I'm going to be on here again tomorrow to talk to y'all about something. And in the coming days, I'm going live. So stay connected to me because I want to go through the process of life. If you are 
somebody watching this video right now and you have questions about certain things that you want to go more and learn more on and i will just give you my perspective i mean if you could take it and you or you could leave it whatever you want to do but i'm just here because i love people i love people and i'm gonna continue to love people this is what i'm supposed to do in this life and so it is what it is and this is my launching of my spiritual business because i'm spiritually connected to the divine and i know he helps me in this life help people relate to their life better i have did it millions of times people have been reaching out to me on my facebook page asking me questions and i had to do readings and um um in energy pulls from knowledge that i need to know that i know to let them know that i acknowledge who they are and i acknowledge what i need to know to talk to them about and so it's real smooth for me and it's getting stronger and i'm doing things in my daily life to make it stronger because my connection to god is like you know what i'm saying but I love and our, all of our connections is, is, is like that if we want it to be like some of us be doing too much we be at work working extra hours we don't have time to connect you know I got a little bit of time so I'm trying to do what I got to do because I know God is on me he is on me like girl do it do it now <laughs> but I love you I love you and um make sure you pray pray a lot pray 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 I don't think I don't think I can say that enough and meditate when you meditate, you get visualizations. Like in my meditations, I see I see forms, I see colors, and I know everything has a spiritual meaning to it. Everything has a spiritual meaning to it. And I just look it up when I get when I come out of my meditation. Um, I did uh, have a meditation uh, two days ago, and I meditated. Uh, I seen red dots. And so I looked up what the red, I had seen five red dots in a row. It was like, and so I looked up the meaning of red dots, and it said to hold God forefront and your thoughts to focus on god powerful like focus on god like right and when i looked it up the hindus wear a, a mole in the middle of their forehead it's a red dot even though i got a mole right here but some of them get the thing i don't know if they paint it on or tattoo it on or however but it's the focusing on god for me and so i was focusing on god at the moment i was meditating and so it just came right on in this is like the most amazing thing I ever learned in my life at the moment because I needed to know that. That's a lot of clarification and it brings me to a place of feeling centered because I know I'm not here doing this by myself. And neither are you. I love you. Till next time, pray, stay positive, and don't let nobody steal your joy. Don't let nobody steal your joy, okay? Mwah.